What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and in today's episode we're going to be going over level sequences and cutscenes part 2. So in the previous episode of this mini-series, we implemented this right here, what you're seeing on the screen, where we have an object in the level performing an action or an animation using a level sequence. And this is something we can do to help us create cutscenes because we can interact with objects in the world at a given time when we choose. Now, in today's episode, we're going to be going over camera movement, making a dynamic intro with that camera as well. So see, the camera is kind of going out, looking up and around at the world, and then returning to the character before we are entering this spot here where we have control of them and can actually play around with it. The camera is one of the most important parts when it comes to the cutscene because A, it looks at the objects that we need it to look at, and B, it's a representation of what the player is seeing. Or really it is what the players are seeing and so we want to make sure that they are seeing what we want them to so in today's episode we will be able to move the camera around the world freely which will add a lot of functionality to our cutscenes in our game if you want to get caught up on some of the stuff you're seeing in this series i'll leave you a link in the top right corner to the third person and action rpg tutorial series that's how you can get this character with attacks npcs equipment and all that good stuff but none of that is required for today's episode if you only care about your level sequences and cutscenes, I'll link you to this episode right here, which is the previous episode of this mini-series. And that will help you understand how we got to this point where we have the walls kind of rotating freely in the world. With that out of the way, we can go ahead and get started. So this is a code and blueprint tutorial series. However, we're going to be doing everything within the editor today, so we only need to worry about blueprints and Unreal Engine itself. Now, in the last episode, as I said, we made these walls move. You can't really see it with the way I've set up the camera, but both the left wall here and the back wall are moving. They both have level sequences on them. Again, that's what we set up in the first episode. And I put them in a folder called level sequences, level one sequence, and level one sequence alt. This wall just raises up and this wall rotates around. First thing we need to do today for the camera behavior is add another level sequence. As far as cutscenes go, level sequences and actor sequences are very good ways to move things in the world. You don't need a unique one for everything. You could add more items to each of these tracks, but I am going to add a camera specific one because the camera in particular could be very advanced. You might have a lot of places it should move to. You might want to zoom in, rotate. You might even want to do things like blur or focus on something. So to do this, I'm going to add a new level sequence. This video will work in Unreal Engine 4 and Unreal Engine 5. It will look slightly different if you're in Unreal Engine 4, but the concept is the same. In Unreal Engine 5, I'm going to go to this right here. This is the button that will allow us to make sequences, level sequences or master sequences. Master sequences are essentially a combination of the level sequences. There's a few things more to it than that, but that's how you can think of it for now. Right now, we're just gonna make another level sequence like we did with our walls in the first episode. So add level sequence, press this button. When you do that, you are going to get this prompt to determine where you save it. I made a level sequences folder in the previous episode, so I'm going to save it in here. And I called this one my level one camera sequence. Now I already have this right here, so I don't need to save it, but you would hit save and it would create this object. It should automatically open up the sequencer tab for you, but if it doesn't for any reason, you can go to window, cinematics, and sequencer. Once you do this, you will get this tab somewhere in your engine. Note that if you're in Unreal Engine 4, you will have an option for a level sequence here. Should be a button that says blueprints and you can select that and then select add level sequence. But you can press add or the plus button and then go to cinematics and add a level sequence through here. So you don't have to do it through the buttons up here. It's always good to know multiple ways to access or create something in the engine. In this particular case, we are going to want a camera that we can use for this cutscene. Now, you could actually use one of your cameras that you have in the world, especially if you're like me and you have a lot more going on in this project. Then you might already have some cameras that are valid to use, but I'm adding a new one for this episode anyway, and I'm going to make a cinematic camera instead of a regular camera. That's not required. You could use a regular camera, but a cinematic camera will come with a lot of benefits that we can use in future episodes to improve our cutscenes. To do this in Unreal Engine 5, you can go to Window, Place Actors, and you'll get this here. There's a very similar window in Unreal Engine 4, and then we can look for our cine camera, or cinematic camera, and just drag it into the world. Now, I already have one, so I'm going to delete the one that I just made, but make sure you have one in your world. 
and you can actually place it where you want it. If you want it to start looking at this pumpkin golem like I have here, place it in this position, but move it around freely until you're happy with its position. Now, go back to the sequencer because I already have this done on my side. It makes it a little bit harder for me to show you, so I'm going to go through the process with you live. So let's go ahead and add that Cine camera actor, and I will position it over here to the left looking at the body armor. You can see it in this little preview window here. Now that I have my camera, I can go ahead and make a new level sequence. You don't need to make another one if you've already made one. You haven't filled yours out yet. Problem is, I already made one prior to this episode, and I want to do the whole process with you. So I'm going to call this level one camera sequence alt for alternate. And you see I already opened up that camera sequence. Now what I want to do is add my new cinematic camera to the sequence. I can do so by pressing plus track. And I can manually add the camera cut track if I want, and then add a camera from here. And I'm going to choose my Cine Camera Actor 5. At this point, I'm going to close my Place Actors tab just so I have a little bit more space. And now we're going to start moving the Cine Camera around, and when we do that, it's going to give us a preview. That way we can manually control what we want the player to see. So if we look on our track here, for our camera. There is a little camera button right here that says lock Cine Camera Actor 5 to selected viewport. If you press this button, it will show you what the camera is currently seeing. This is very good because of course, before we were just speculating, we could use the preview window, but it's kind of small. So while that is good for a quick reference when we want to actually make our camera movement, this pilot mode that exists is really convenient to have. If you want to disable it at any time, of course, you just press the camera again and you will be good to go. But we're going to go into it. Now, additionally, you can also press this little button here to stop piloting the actor. That's what it's called. That means stop controlling the camera or looking through the eyes of the camera. So if I look at it from the view we have here, you see the camera actually moving around. We're going to treat this track just like we do any other track. Just like we did our walls in the previous episode, we can add a track on our camera itself and for the specific event that we want. So I'm going to pick transform just like I did with our walls. And I'm going to open transform up. And in fact, we will use the entire transform this time instead of just location, rotation, or scale because the camera could do all three of those things. These values are frames. And so this is at zero frames. This is 15 frames. We want to make a key at zero frames here so that the value of this camera is tracked. Then we can actually physically move the camera in the viewport to where we want it to go. We can zoom in using the scroll wheel, which is actually moving the camera. You can look around by pressing the right mouse button, and then you can click the middle mouse button in to move as well. So you have all three ranges of movement, just like you do in the viewport normally. These are all actually moving the camera around. So say I want this to come over to the armor and look directly at it like that. I can move my scrubber to the spot that I want. Let's say it takes 30 frames to do that, or roughly half a second when we're running at 60 FPS. So this is where I want my camera to go. I can press plus to add a key here, and now the camera will move there automatically that simple. Now let's say another 30 frames, so one second in, we want to look at this barrel. We could come over here and add a key. Now if we play the whole sequence from the start, it's going to go to the armor, but then go to the barrel. After that, say 120 frames, we want to go back to the character. like we're entering them, taking control of them. So somewhere here, very close to the character, we can add another key and then play our animation. So there you go. And now we have our sequence that we want to use so we can trim off any excess time if we have it by dragging this red bar right here. I'll drag it somewhere around there. Doesn't really have to be perfect because a little bit of delay here would be fine. At least in our case, of course, you change it for what you need, but that looks perfectly fine to me.
One last thing we don't want to forget, once we are ready here, we need to actually add the specific camera to the camera cut section here. So you'll see there's a little plus on this camera cut section. You can select that and it will allow you to choose one of the tracks. We want our Cine Camera Actor 5, which is the track that we just created, and it will look like this. You must do this. If you don't do this, then you will just show as inside the camera or inside the character. So now what I want to do is go into somewhere where I can actually trigger this level sequence. And so far in this mini series, we've been doing it in the level blueprint. So in Unreal Engine 5, you click this little graph button and then open level blueprint. In Unreal Engine 4, there is a button that says blueprints. You click that and go to open level blueprint. Once you get in here, we are going to create the level sequence player and play it just like the other ones that we did. There is one small change that I made since the previous episode off screen, which is this node right here. So regularly when you call create level sequence player, you get this node and then you pick your sequence where I picked level one sequence and level one sequence all. In this case, say I want an animation to keep looping. As you noticed, I actually have this wall piece moving forever. It keeps doing this loop. This is because of the settings in the level sequence player. You can right click on the settings button here and split the struct pin to get a lot more options. I didn't touch anything else on this node except for the settings loop loop input here, which I changed from zero to negative one, which means loop this indefinitely. So I want to play both these level sequences from our previous episode here. But then I want to add a new one for our camera level sequence. So I can call create level sequence player. My level one camera sequence alt. Then I can drag off the return value, which is the level sequence player object reference and call play, which will play this level sequence. And for now, I will use this one over the one that I made prior to this episode. We can right click in the settings here and split the struct pin. And you see how I have the settings loop here. I can right click and split that struct pin to get the settings loop loop. And this is what I was saying. You could set to negative one if you wanted it to keep looping forever. I'm not going to do that for this specific level sequence, but I just want you to have all the available information. This is the final result. Anyway, guys, that's all I got for today. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If it did, please subscribe and consider joining the Patreon, YouTube membership, or Discord subscriptions. Like so many of you guys have, it is such a huge help to myself and the channel, and I'm very grateful for it. If you ran into any issues with this episode or any of my tutorials, feel free to join the Discord community. There is a link in the description, and I would be happy to help you. That's all I got, though, guys. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.